If I place this control valve in an actual service, what is going to happen? Will I get the same leakage rate as it is mentioned in the standard? The answer to it is an absolute no. You will not get the standard. What? Wait for the end and you will yourself answer this question. So let's get started with the video. What are the leakage standards actually available? There are a ton of leakage standards available. For example, the ISO standard, API standard, MSS standard and the ANSI standard. For control valves throughout the world, the most used standard has been the ANSI FCI 70-20. When you look at this amazing standard and if you see a lot of catalogs you would see another standard which is named for example if you see here the ANSI standard comes with an IEC standard mentioned here in the Fisher catalog as 60534-4. These both standards are very similar to each other. For ANSI FCI 70-20 is divided into six classes. This remains same for both the standards. Class 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. But the most used classes have usually been class 4 and class 6 for majority of the cases. So let us focus first our attention on these two important classes. That having been said, now let's look at an IEC definition which helps us to understand that when a valve is seat tested, they have a certain the nomenclature to follow that would help us to understand what happens in seat leakage testing. There are three important parameters to be considered. The first X is going to be what is the leakage rate that you require. Do you require class 1, class 2, class 6, etc. The second thing important to note in leakage rate, what is going to be the test medium? Is it going to be gas or is it going to be liquid? And the third important thing to be noted is what is the test procedure? What is going to be the differential pressure, temperature, etc. So that comes in IEC standard divided into test procedure 1 and test procedure 2. Let's take an actual example. So here's an example taken from the IEC standard. So here if you see the 4 stands for the leakage class, L stands that the test medium has been liquid and 1 stands for the test procedure that is to be conducted. In class 4 leakage rate, the one thing to be considered is the leakage rate first. So let's know the leakage rate is going to be 0.01% of the rated valve capacity. That means that if I have a valve which is completely open, what is going to be the maximum flow? That is called as the rated capacity of the valve. So for example, let us take hypothetically that our flow is going to be 100 kg per hour. Now when my valve is completely closed, the leakage rate has to be 0.01 kg per hour. This is a very minuscule quantity and this is the stringent criteria for class 4 leakage rate. But wait, there are more parameters to be considered. The first one which we saw was just leakage rate. The second thing is what is going to be the test medium. The test medium which is allowed can be liquid or gas for example air or water and the entire assembly has to be put under some differential pressure. The differential pressure that is mentioned is usually 50 PSIG or the service DP whichever is lower at a temperature of around 50 to 150 degree Fahrenheit. This is the most used class when it comes for metal to metal seat. 90% of your applications will usually be having a class 4 leakage rate. However, class 4 leakage rate also requires certain engineering judgment to be taken. For example, if you go for a balanced trim design, here in order to achieve class 4 leakage rate, you might have graphite or piston teflon rings available. Now these rings, since they are not made of metal, they would surely have certain limiting temperature. Let's look at a real life example for this case. Here we have a class 4 leakage rate for a balanced trim design. If you look here for HPT and HPAT Fisher valves, if you see here, the temperature that it can go is up to 232 degrees Celsius if the piston rings are available. But if you have an extended option like peak available, which can go up to 316 degrees Celsius. However, engineering judgment and consideration is to be required for higher temperature cases. You might have to go for an unbalanced design if your actuator size is OK or other options have to be explored when it comes to class 4 leakage class. Let's look at the most amazing class that is told to be class 6 which has the most stringent leakage class and people assume that class 6 is the best engineering judgment or the choice to be taken. However,
however maybe you will understand by the end of the video that it is not the best choice to be taken there are other judgments or other considerations to be taken as well class 6 leakage class if you see requires a soft seated valve because you need to have such low leakage rate that is not possible by metal to metal seat so you have example materials like teflon or ptfe etc so you can understand and remember the first limitation itself is here available to us that for such soft seated the temperature can be around 200 degrees celsius or so and also there is also pressure limitation here at high pressure the soft seat might get excluded let me ask you another question do you remember there are trims available like anti-cavitation trim low noise trim etc now for such trims which are having so many holes to it or what we just saw we have an high pressure or temperature application but these applications are also requiring very low leakage class for example class 6 what will you do in this cases give it some time think we will get to this answer by the end let us try to at least dive what is class 6 valve in and of itself the first thing to notice class 6 valve will also leak however the leakage rate will be very less and the test fluid that will be used will either be air or nitrogen and that being said once that is put into the valve the valve has to be put under certain differential pressure so we'll put it around 50 psig or operating pressure whichever is lower that being said the leakage rate is not exactly the same for all the valve sizes the leakage rate basically has a table here which is similar for ANSI FCI 70-2 and EN IEC 60534-4 the table is very simple it usually starts for smaller sizes the restrictions are higher it is more strict as the size of the valve keeps increasing it becomes more liberal if you see for one inch diameter valve port diameter it says that the allowable bubbles is just one when it gets to 10 inches allowable bubbles are around 63 bubbles but let's put this to a real life context so for example i put my control valve with seat leakage class to be class 6 as a one inch valve and how much time will it take for example to fill a water bottle a simple water bottle more than even three days and nights will take just to fill a water bottle so you can understand how much slow or small the stringent class is for class 6 leakage valve but let's get to our original question you have an extremely low leakage requirement but you have anti-cavitation trim low noise trim very high temperatures or very high pressure what do you do in such cases let's take an actual industrial example what had happened was on 22nd of april in the year 2018 there was a very big blast and miles apart the building shook not just that the company also had to pay 500 million dollars in terms of the fines etc and everything happened just because of a leaking valve yes what had happened was if you read the report by csb in the fcc explosion that happened in the husky superior refinery you would understand that it was basically the main cause was a failure of a valve the report page number 93 states very clearly that the flawed understanding of the sliding valve's purpose related in the over reliance on the single safeguard which caused the entire incident and the havoc the purpose of the valve has to be very clear do you want to control or do you want that valve to work as an on off valve these are two separate functions example if you go to the key lesson here you see here it says very clearly what had happened was the valve that was used to supply the catalyst was basically considered to be gas tight or completely sealed but because of erosion the valve was not completely sealed and the air and the hydrocarbon could mix together and you know what happens when these two difficult substances come together a blast is inevitable and that is what happened in the refinery what does this have to do with our question of extremely low leakage rate and when you have things like anti-cavitation trim low noise trim high pressure trim high temperature trim etc for those cases also you have to consider the same solution that has to be implemented in this refinery the answer is in a control valve line you will also have to put a on off valve downstream now what does that do is basically the control valve will be responsible for controlling the flow which what it is good at and the on off valve will remain completely open during normal operation 
you have to use a full bore valve for example this case so the control valve is basically doing the control operation and the on off valve here will do what it's good at it will have a very high leakage rate for example iso 520 which is the standard used for on off valves leakage rate and rate a is the best available ever and that will help you to prevent your leakage rate so your control valve can basically even be class 4 leakage rate you can have anti cavitation trim or very high pressure temperature service and the on off valve downstream will handle the leakage responsibility now you might think is this not a costly solution well depending on 500 million dollars as loss this is i think a very economical solution let's get to the first question that was asked initially the leakage rate here when you put a valve in the process will it have the same leakage rate let's look at the answer from the standard itself the standard of iec itself says in the note one this part of the standard cannot be used as basis for predicting the leakage rate when the control valve is installed under actual operating conditions what does this mean that the valve which we just saw was tested only at test conditions that is shop conditions but when it is put at process the conditions will be slightly or sometimes heavily different for example if you see here what we saw for class 6 leakage rate is basically based on an operating pressure of 50 psig or less come depending on what is the actual application that means around 3 to 4 bar of pressure at max but what if your differential pressure is 100 bar or your liquid in instead of air is hydrogen so such cases your leakage is going to significantly increase and you cannot depend only on your control valve to completely seal the application also you have class 1 2 3 which are usually not much used but at least let us have a basic understanding so shop class 1 is used when you don't have any shop testing required class 2 has a 0.5 percent of the valves rated capacity and class 3 has a valve rated capacity of 0.1 percent of the leakage rate all of this is around differential pressure of around 3 to 4 bar when it is tested in the shop when is this usually considered during a double port control valve so double port control valves usually have higher leakage rate so they usually have class 2 or class defined very rarely would you see a double ported control valve with class 4 leakage rate finally you have is class 5 leakage rate which is in between your class 4 and 6 the basic criteria to remember here is a leakage rate allowed is minimum 5 into only 10 ml per minute per inch of orifice diameter per differential pressure PSI so in that way this you can consider to be the moderate choice it can be achieved even with metal to metal seat as well and I'm very passionate about instrumentation and control and I've been making notes from last seven to eight years if you are interested I would love to share this with you we have a little community where basically we share these notes every week plus the videos so you can learn distraction free our little community is called advanced instrumentation group on whatsapp so it's a small community where privacy is maintained no single person's number is shared to anybody else and we learn every weekly so link is given in the video description and you can leave any time if required.